So moving from solving system of equations to solving systems of inequalities. And again, we're going to have to go back to graphing to be able to do this. Again, this is a Algebra 1 concept, so today is going to pretty much be review. We'll look at a couple of different turns and twists on it, but for the most part, you've done all this before. So in this case, you'll see that we're trying to solve this system of inequalities. In order to do so, we need to graph, which means we need slope-intercept forms. And we go through, get y by itself. So I have 2y greater than or equal to 5x plus 8. I by 2, y greater than or equal to 5 halves x plus 4. Other equation for y. Less than or equal to negative 3x plus 12. Y less than or equal to negative 3 fourths. X plus 3. Take sample points of 0, 0. In both cases, we get 0 greater than or equal to 4. It's false. In this case, Take 0, 0, we get 0 less than or equal to 3, which is true. So that's going to tell us our shading. Let's start with the first one. We'll graph this by going up to 4, going up 5, over 2, solid line because it's equal to sample point of 0, 0 yielded a false answer therefore we shade to the opposite side in this case we go up to 3 go down 3 over 4 Solid line. Zero, zero is my sample. It ended up being true, so I shade towards zero, zero. And this right here is my double shaded region, which means any point in this region satisfies both the inequalities. Here we go again. This is already in slope intercept form for us, but you'll notice there are no equal signs, therefore I'm going to have to use dotted lines. So I start at zero, I go down one over three, I dot my lines. And the problem with using the sample point of zero, zero this time is that zero, zero is on this line, so it's not going to help us to find out if it works. We know it's going to work and it can't be equal. So I need to pick a point either above or below that line. I'm going to pick a sample of 1, 1. So I would get 1 greater than negative 1 third. True statement. Therefore, shade up towards 1, 1. Second one, I go down 3. Up 5 over 1. dotted line once again. You'll notice 0, 0 is not part of the graph, so I can use that as my sample and get 0 less than negative 3, which is false. So if I use 0, 0, I need to shade the other side. My double shaded region is over here. So now we've got some absolute values. This one we're used to seeing, this one not so much. Let's take this one first. We know we have an HK value. H equals 2, K equals 0, and slope equals 1 since there's no term outside the absolute value. So I'm going to move over to 2, up 0, and then do a slope of 1.
equal to. Go ahead and solid line it. Sample point is zero, zero. And with the sample point of zero, zero, I notice that two greater than or equal to zero is true. So I'm shading basically around that absolute value. Now, next, we're going to look at the absolute value of y is less than or equal to 1. So the only way to do this is get rid of the absolute value, which means I need plus or minus y is less than or equal to 1. Well, let's take a peek. I can't have a plus or minus, so I must have y less than or equal to 1, and then y of the negative type less than or equal to 1, which means y is greater than or equal to negative 1. So now rather than two lines, I have three lines I have to graph, and I'm going to look for a triple shaded region. Okay? If y is equal to 1, that's a horizontal going across. And I want to shade all the points where y is less than that. That's down. So now my double shaded region is outside of the absolute value and below the blue line. Let's graph this last one. Here's negative 1. And I need to graph all the points that are greater. So I go above y. And you'll see that my triple shaded region now is all this area between the two lines and around the absolute value gap. Next, we're going to talk about vertices of a closed region. In order to do that, we've got to first graph these equations. The only one that's not in sloped intercept form is the last one, so y less than or equal to negative x plus 2. So let's look at what happens when I graph this. Here's x greater than or equal to negative 2. That's a vertical line. Oops. It's a vertical line at 2. For the negative type, not positive. So I go vertical. And then I shade where x is greater than negative 2. Well, that's over here to the right. Next, I'm going to go down 2 and a slope of up 1 over 1. Connect the dots. and shade for y is greater than, I'm going to pick my sample point of 0, 0. And I have 0 greater than or equal to negative 2, which is true. So this is going to shade up here. Notice my double shaded region is in here right now. And then my last graph, let's go up to down one over one a couple of times. Here's my graph. Pick zero, zero again. And I have zero less than or equal to two, which is true. So I shade towards there. Notice triple shaded region is this triangular shaped closed region. Now, sometimes you're going to be very lucky. And you'll end up in graphing such that you can see the vertices of this closed region. In this case, you'll notice there's one at 2, 4, which is right here. There's another one at 2, 0, which is right here. And our last one is at, and that's a negative 2, sorry at negative 2, negative 4. And those are the vertices of our closed region.
take a look at another example. This is going to be a little more difficult to graph. And not only is it difficult to graph, but these numbers get large. And putting things in slope intercept form is also a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to find intercepts to graph this. So I'm just going to look at two points. I'm going to take and set x equal to 0, y equal to 0, and then solve. If my x is 0, I have 3x equals 60, so y is equal to 20. And if my y is equal to 0, I have 2x equals 60, so x equals 30. All right? If I were to label these, let's go by 5s. So here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Likewise over here, every 2 will be 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Great. So, now in this case, we start graphing, and my first graph is at 0, 20, and 30, 0. So I graph that. I check a sample point of 0, 0. 0 plus 0 less than 60, true, so it shades down here. Next, x and y intercepts, plug in a 0 for x, y is 28, plug in a 0 for y, x is 14, 14's right around uh, here, and 28 is somewhere around here. Connect the dots. You'll see this is not super accurate, and there's no way I can tell that those hit on the exact spot. All right. And we shade. 0 plus 0 is less than 28, so we shade in between here. Double shaded region is this little region here. Last, let's just do this in black. 0 for x, y is 48, 0 for y, x is 12. So at 12, which is right around here, I put a dot, and at 48, which is up here, I put a dot, and I connect the lines again. This is going to be a little tougher. Probably ought to be using a ruler or something. So here's this graph. Right around there. Alright, now, if I've graphed accurately and shaded accurately, then I know that this triple shaded region here lies in this area because I know x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, so it's somewhere in here. I need to find the vertices of this triangle form. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to solve these systems. So to solve these systems, we did this in our last lesson. We can use elimination to do that. So I'm going to call this 1, 2, 3. I know for a fact that my point right here is 0, 20. I also know that my most inside point is 10. Zero. Now I need to find out where these points lie. Because it appears that there's going to be an intersection point on the blue and the green, and then the black and the green as well. So I need to find those points. So let's do the, uh, the blue and the black, first of all, to see where that is. It's somewhere to be down here. Alright, and I'm going to take and multiply the top equation by a negative, so I have negative 2x minus y 
equals negative 28. Bottom equation, 4x plus y equals 48. Add, I get 2x equals 20. x equals 10. So at 10, we have another intersection point, it appears. All right. And actually, this point right here is not 10. It's the y-intercept of 12. Sorry. All right. And this point for the x value is at 10. And we're going to take and plug that back in to find our y. So I have 40 plus y equals 48. And y equals a total of 8. So we have one intersection point at 8. Sorry, at 10, 8. And that's going to be right here, the blue and the black. Next, I'm going to need to find the intersection of probably the blue and the green. That looks like it's inside that double shaded region. It looks like the black and the green intersect outside that triple shaded region. So the blue and the green are 1 and 2. So in this case, I'm going to keep the top equation the same. Multiply the bottom equation by negative 1. Add, we get 0. 2y is equal to 32. y is equal to 16. If y is equal to 16, I can plug back in. I have 2x plus 3 times 16 is 60. 2x equals, this is 48, bring that over. It's 12 and x equals 6. So at 6, 16, I have another intersection point right here. which now gives me all my points of this region here. So 0, 0, 12, 0, 0, 20, 6, 16, and finally 10, so now we're going to do this in a word problem. It says the drama club selling tickets. Adult ticket costs fifteen dollars. Student ticket eleven. Auditorium will seat three hundred total holders. Drama club wants to collect at least thirty six hundred from the ticket sales. And write inequalities to model this problem and name the two possible solutions of the problem. So there's probably more than one solution because we're shading everything. So if I want to write an equation about cost, I need to involve the money. So I take $15 for each student ticket. Let's call this student ticket X. Then we'll call an adult ticket Y. Actually, the adult ticket is $15, so that's Y. And then the student ticket is $11, call that X. And they have to make at least $36.30. So I have to go less than or equal to $36.30, because that's at least. And I'll change my mind on that again. And call that greater than or equal to, because I could make more than $36.30. Next, I want to take and sell 300 tickets. But I can't sell any more than that because the auditorium only seats 300. So I have to have less than or equal to 300 
and that's the total number of people. So that's all the adults, Y, and all the students, X. So now I'll take and graph these using intercepts. This is the easiest. Plug a zero in for X, and I get out 300 for Y, and a zero in for Y, and I get 300 for X. So now I'll take and set x equal to 0 up here. When I get x value of 0, then my y value is 242. When my y value is 0, my x value is 330. So now I have to label my graph well enough, and we know we have to have some adults and some kids so I know x greater than or equal to 0, y greater than or equal to 0, which puts it in the first quadrant. So now let's take and graph these. It's important to make your scale fairly big so you can have somewhat of an accurate graph. If we go by 20s, I think we'll be okay. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. It's 200. 20, 40, 60, 80, it's 300, 20, 40, 60, 80, 400. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 100, 200, 300, and 400. So now I'm going to graph. We're going to graph 242, somewhat right around here, and 330, right around here. Let's go ahead and draw a line. I would use a ruler just so your lines are fairly accurate. And then we go ahead and Plot our next set of points, 300 and 300. Plot that graph. Like so. And now the most important part is shading. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll shade this guy in green, this guy in red. So the green is the top. And this says, pick a sample point of 0, 0. If I do that, 0 is greater than 3,600. That's false. So that means the shade's above. Pick 0, 0 here. Zero is less than 300, that's true. This shade's below. Double shaded region is right in this area here. So now I have to pick two points from this region that are going to satisfy my equation. Well, here's one at 20 up, and that's uh, 260. Let's find another one. Here it looks like another one that uh, looks like 80 over and 200 up. So these points should satisfy that equation. Clearly, there's less than 300 in the first one and the second one. So it satisfies both of these bonds. Now i got to make sure the cache is correct. So I'm going to need to go... Two sixty, it's my y value times fifteen plus eleven times twenty. And then I'm going to need to go two hundred times fifteen and eighty times twenty and figure out how much that gets me. So the top gets me roughly forty one twenty which is over my 3,630, which I needed to make. 
So that checks. That's the solution. And the bottom gets me 4,600 even, which is over my 3,630. So this is a solution as well. So this got a little bit difficult when we started getting the word problems, but I think you guys can handle it. Do your lesson summary. Do your problems assigned for Connected Lesson 15. We'll see you tomorrow.